Hey everybody, hope you're all enjoying your summer. I've been working on a lot of projects lately that have been more long-term and taken me forever. So I wanted to take some time out and make something that was kind of quick and fun and easy. Don't you just love those sort of projects? You can use scraps and it's something that you, you can feel a sense of accomplishment right away, get a little more of that instant gratification. So the pattern I've been wanting to try, it's for this awesome looking donut pot holder. And I actually printed this out like a while ago and just never got around to it. So now I'm gonna get around to it. And it is a free pattern. You can get it on Craftsy and it's by this very fun, whimsical designer. And uh, she goes by Pen and Paper Patterns. So I will link it in the description box and let's get started. Let's sew. This pattern comes with two templates that you need to cut out. And one is for the frosting on the donut and the other is for the donut itself. So I'm gonna use my trusty paper scissors here. Yeah, just remember, you only use fabric scissors on fabric and paper scissors on paper. These are my paper scissors. My fabric scissors never cut paper to the threat of death. Just don't cut paper with them. It will be very bad. Also with your rotary cutter, I also only use old rotary cutter blades to cut paper and I use new blades to cut fabric. You want to make sure to go carefully and uh, not because you don't want to end up the worst is when you end up cutting into your template or your pattern piece and then you have to print another one so I don't want to mess this up so I'm still here cutting away and never underestimate the time it takes to cut and sometimes trace pattern pieces when I'm doing clothing it will often take me a couple two or three hours just to trace different pattern pieces and then cut them out so definitely when you're planning for your project time definitely make sure to take into account this step because it is definitely no joke not my favorite part of sewing but everybody's got to do it sort of like ironing everyone's got to iron i've got all my template pieces cut out the background circle the frosting and the donut template. Oh yeah, and I spent 20 minutes looking for fabric that I know I had, but I had a hard time finding. This is what I'm going to use as the actual donut fabric. And I knew I actually bought it with this pattern in mind a while ago, don't ask. And it was in a box on top of the cabinet. Of course, that's the last place I looked, right? All right, I've got Game of Thrones on mute and I just finished the raw edge applique. And in the original tutorial, you can see that there are little sprinkles on the frosting and that is accomplished through hand embroidery. Something I don't have a lot of experience with, but why not the present? 
To make my sprinkles, I'm going to be using some Arafil 12 weight thread. The lower the number, the heavier the thread actually is. And I also have a gold embroidery needle right here. And I'm gonna get started. So let's cut off a piece. I cut off a piece of thread and I'm gonna go ahead and thread, try to thread this. Let's see here. There we go. Alright, I don't need I don't need too much thread because really we're just gonna go in and out in a few spots and stitch those. So I don't need a ton of it. So I'm just using like a length like this. I'm gonna knot one end a few times. I'm gonna knot this end a few times just so it doesn't go through the fabric. I'm gonna try it three times and that should do the trick. Let's see here. Okay, one more time because that knot didn't quite go with the others. Here we go. Okay, that should be good. I've also got these handy little thimbles I'm going to be using to try to save my thumbs from any trauma. So, all right. Actually, I really, yeah, we'll try using both of them. All right, so I've got my needle and thread, and I've got my, got my applique piece. So I'm just gonna go in at some random spot. Doesn't really matter where, because sprinkles are supposed to be random, right? And then really, you're just going to be going back in at some spot. I'm gonna make my sprinkles about I'm gonna try to make my sprinkles about um, I don't know like a third maybe like a three-eighths of an inch something like that I don't know it's really obviously not a very exact science so we're just gonna go in here and then I'm just gonna be coming back out at another you know random point it really again doesn't doesn't matter where just anywhere Okay, there we go. Well, actually, this uh, these thimbles are actually really helping. I I've never really used a thimble before, so I'm just gonna start making little sprinkles here. And obviously, you can see the back is gonna the back is going to show the little trail of your stitches, but it's not gonna matter because it's going to be hidden inside the batting and the backing. So really no one's ever gonna see this, so don't worry about making it perfect. Okay. Actually, this would be sort of fun to do to like a sweater or a t-shirt, wouldn't it? You could sort of, you know, make some funky sprinkle designs on a t-shirt or or um i was actually thinking about trying to sew some gemstones on some sort of random sweater or something that'd be sort of fun so notice my sprinkles are kind of starting to look like sprinkles let's see here we'll keep going here And I'm not gonna go too crazy. I'm just gonna give, make enough sprinkles to give the effect of sprinkles. The embroidery was a success. And you can see on the back, it sort of looks like a zigzag maze type of deal. So next, I'm actually going to go a little rogue off the pattern and it calls for you to use Insulbrite. And I'm actually gonna use a layer of Insulbrite and a layer of batting. So I'm gonna go cut those out and then I'm gonna base together my quilt sandwich for quilting.
Okay, so at this point you have got a pot holder that's got one side of the bias tape already sewn on. And here's a tip that I've learned for this pattern, and that is to make sure because this bias tape bias tape has been stretched, if you try to just fold it over, it's your pot holder is not going to be flat. So what I did is I took a little tiny pair of scissors and I'm clipping to the seam allowance. So I'm going to be clipping just enough, just, you know, kind of like how you, how you will clip curves. I'm just clipping curves. So I'm just going to go around and maybe like once an inch, you know, once every inch, inch and a half. Just be very careful that you don't cut your project because that would be terrible to get this far and then cut something in it. So just be careful and go very slow again and just make a little, you know, little snip, you know, every little bit. And this will help your project to lay flat because you want it to lay flat. Obviously it's a pot holder and if you don't, it's uh, not really going to lay as flat. go this is actually going a little quicker so in full disclosure I'm actually making two but I finished my like tester one first just to make sure that when I'm doing it on camera for you I am not giving you a bad result so okay actually doing pretty good all right and I'm using a pair of ginger scissors I love this brand they're such high quality and I think they're made in like Italy and they've actually started selling them at Walmart so you can get a uh, some nice scissors at Walmart if you go at the right time all right here we go we're almost done clipping and yeah I'm clipping like a little shy of the seam allowance just to make sure I don't clip anything because you don't want to get your stitches in there that's for sure all right so I am done oh boy and I actually did something bad um, but hopefully uh, I actually sewed it to the fr oh boy I sewed this to the front of my project and not to the back um, okay the other one I actually did it right um, this one you know what we're just gonna roll with it you know what that's that's sewing that's sewing for you but you know I think my project will still look okay it will just have the loop on the front instead of the back but you know what that's okay just know when you are stitching this make sure to do this on the back and not the front hey this is this is real life this is real life so yeah, just make sure to do it on the back instead of the front, which I should have done. So it should have looked like this on the back side. But you know what? That's that's okay. That's that's sewing. So I just realized that now, but it'll look almost the same. It'll the loop will just be on the other side. But honestly, other than me, I don't think anyone's really going to notice that. So although I may Actually, I may stitch, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pick the stitches out of here and then I'm just going to change the loop so that it's on the back. So I'm just going to pick these stitches out. And that's the thing, sewing isn't perfect. We're not perfect, we're human. So all I'm going to do is pick this out and then I'm just going to do this section over again but with the loop on the back side instead. And actually it'll be pretty easy to do because all I have to do is take it out and then do it on the back. And honestly, you're, again, the project will look pretty much the same. Okay, so I'm picking this out. Here we go. All right. So I'm just going to clip these threads. So again, you can see nobody's perfect. I am certainly not. But you know what? This might be a good lesson because if you do put your loop on the wrong side, you can still fix it. 
So all I'm gonna do is, so I'm just gonna re-stitch this. So I'm just going to basically be, actually I guess I, yeah, I can just do it anywhere. I'm just gonna be putting this on the back and then I will just be re-sewing this one section. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I've re-sewn this section with the loop on the back. So from the front, it'll look like this. Okay, so now let's go back and you can see on the front, it looks the same just with no, no loop. So I'm just gonna go back and do what I was going to do before, which is to, you know, make sure these are lined up fold it over and I'm gonna again have to do this off camera for a second because I just don't have the uh, I can't like do this I have to kind of be looking down and uh, okay also this needs to be folded okay all right so I think this is looking okay I'm just doing this backwards since I accidentally sewed it to the front instead of the back. But again, not a really not a huge deal. Okay, I'm sure I'm sure I'm not the first person to do this, and I'm probably not the last. So it'll be okay. Okay, so I'm just going to go around and. Again, you should be doing this to the front. I'm just doing this to the back because I sewed it on the wrong uh, the wrong side. So always double check before you start sewing that you're actually sewing the bias tape onto the uh, the back and not the front like I did. Let's see. But again, it's really not a make it or break it moment and this is just for fun. So that's what makes sewing fun is that each project and each uh, experience is a little bit different. So here we go. We're just gonna tape this to you. And I think this is gonna look kind of cute. So let's just make sure we're doing that. Here we go. All right. So I'm just going through and clipping this into place. I guess you could do this from the uh, the back if you wanted to. I mean, really, I'm using the same color thread, so you're not even gonna see this. So it's really not gonna be a problem. So I'm cool with it. Okay, so I'm just gonna go around. And when I've been doing binding or bias tape, I have a few choices. You can pin, you can glue based, or you can use wonder clips and I find that the pins kind of distort the fabric so I don't really like to use pins and when I've glue based it things I find that the like if I was to glue base this like this fabric would get all funky inside so I kind of have found the wonder clips to be the in my for me at least the best option when I'm doing that or if I'm machine sewing binding on I just find it to be to have the best results overall. So I've been using that for the last few projects I've done. All right, so here we go. Okay, and actually I could do this from the front or the back, I suppose. Wouldn't really matter, I guess. Okay, and I'm trying to kind of get these to, I'm actually trying to get this to line up with the stitching line a little bit. So if you line it up with the stitching line, when you sew it on, actually I may sew this from the front. Let me just sort of, eh, well or not, I don't know. We'll see. I guess it doesn't really, doesn't really matter, so. Okay, but if I match it up with the stitch line here, since you'll be sewing a little bit beyond that, you should be able to catch whatever fabric is on the other side and it should be okay. I'm just gonna finish this up and then we will go to the sewing machine again. All right, so I've got my clips all on and I decided to sew it from the front just for, just so that it looks nice on the front because that's what matters, right? And I'm actually going to...
many of you have been asking how to get out of your timeshare. Well, there's only one company I trust to do it. Timeshare Exit Team. Timeshare Exit Team doesn't buy, sell, or donate timeshares. Those tactics leave you still liable. They get you out legitimately. Yes, you're going to write them a check, but they have a 100 percent I will do... Let's see here. Um... Go ahead. I think maybe I did do zero. All right. So I've got my my stitch uh, or my needle position set at zero. So it's a little bit to the left of the center position, and I'm just going to line up the edge with this little edge on my presser foot, and then all I'm going to do is uh, go around, and it should hopefully it should catch your stitching on the back. It should catch the fabric on the back too. I'm just gonna go around and uh, finish this. I cannot believe, like for me, doing anything in a day is fast because I'm very slow with sewing. And uh, this project actually did not take as long as I was anticipating. So if you are looking for a, just an afternoon project or a weekend project, I think this is a good contender. And it's a perfect gift. I think it would be great for like bridal showers or a housewarming gift. You know, if you're giving someone kitchen stuff, especially if they love donuts. And actually you could make this with, with any theme. It doesn't have to be donuts. I mean, it could be, you know, a beach ball. It could be anything that's round. You could do applique to something else. So really I'm getting some ideas for other types of pot holders that maybe I can make in the future. And as I'm going out, going along, I'm just taking out the wonder clips. But I'm pretty, I'm actually pretty far distance away from the edge, so it should be catching the fabric on the back. If not, you can, you know, it really, you can just go back and redo some, some uh, places, or you can do an invisible stitch if that bothers you to have visible stitching. But I think this is actually going to catch on the back. I think these are really cute. Alright, almost there. We're halfway done with this uh, last step. I mean, my last quilt took me two years to make, so this project seems like it's lightning fast compared to that. Although I did just get a an Instagram message from um, a lady who asked me to pattern test a uh, clutch purse so maybe I'll be doing that next but I actually you know what I think the next project I'm gonna do I haven't made anything that my pale Susie quilts has designed yet so I think the next project really needs to be the retro plaid quilt what do you think it's a free pattern she put out in conjunction with birch fabrics and it apparently can be made in an afternoon, according to Susie, so that sounds pretty good to me. Maybe I can get a quilt done in a month this time, or two months, so we'll see. All right. We're almost there, and at the end, all I'm doing is I'm using the uh, the knot feature on my sewing machine to to finish it off so I'm not hide uh, you know I'm not hiding I'm not you know with this project I'm not really knocking myself out to hide the thread or anything like that so I think it'll be okay we'll, we'll live right all right all right we are almost to the end oh boy all right uh, there was a little bit of a wrinkle here let's see if I can fix this. I don't know. I think I can. Alright. Actually, all I have to do is go like that. Alright. We'll just, it'll be alright. Alright. We're just gonna be real careful around the around where that fold is. I really love my Janome 7700 because it's got this amazing AccuFeed foot. So it's so great and I, you know, don't really have to deal with any issues with my fabric getting 
now being fed evenly, so that's pretty cool. I really like this machine. The only downside with the Janome is that it doesn't really do super bulky items. So if I, the next time I make a purse or something, I'm actually gonna try the new sale right we got just to see how that stacks up. All right, let's do the lock stitch. And then we are done. All right. Aren't these awesome? I mean, how cute are they? I really want a donut now. And here's the backs. I chose solids for the backs, but you can do any print or any solid that you want. Just make sure when you're making this pattern, don't do what I did and make sure to sew your bias binding to the back of the donut first. Unlike me, I at least made one of them right. So, I just love these. And I think as far as patterns go, this one totally rocks. You need to download it right now. It's available for free in the Craftsy store and I will link it below. And I was mistaken earlier, the pattern is actually by two folks and I'm putting their names right here so you can see them. And thank you so much for sewing with me. This was a total blast. I think we should do it again. And next time, hopefully I will be making Susie Quilt's Retro Plaid Quilt. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up, comment with any thoughts below, and make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of the latest videos. I'm Jennifer Moore. See you next time.